In this video, I will show you how to create an exam paper using the automated marking system. So the first thing that we need to click is new exam. And then we will choose the one that has the auto mark exams. So under auto mark exams, you can write down the information. However, I will not recommend you to use this information block because an information block is also belonging to one of its question. So you can straight away use either multiple choice, simple answer, fill the gaps, match answers, free text, or requires a student to attach a file to submit as his answer. Now, bear in mind that automated marking system is only applicable for multiple choice, simple answer, fill the gaps, and match the answers. So I will go through one by one to show you how I can create questions by using these different types of question types. Let's go to multiple choice. So under multiple choice, I will create a fairly simple question and that is which of the following is a color. So this will be my question. Next, you will have an answer option. Say for example, I have only two options, which, is, uh, which means only one is correct. I can give you a brown color, okay, okay, and then I can add as an answer, and then I can have a cat, and I can add as an answer. Now, before continue on, you have the option to shuffle the answer options. That means every student receiving the question paper will have the answers being shuffled or you can designate them according to the chronological order. For me, I personally like to use shuffle the answer options. Next, you have show answer options. Say for example, for this question, you have only one correct answer. Say brown is the correct answer. You can choose either a radio type or checkbox type of answering. A checkbox type requires a student or actually shows the student that there could be one or more than one choices that you can use checkbox. For radio type, it means there is only one answer. And I'll show you how it looks like. You can add more than two choices. To continue this, I will add a snack, a car, and I will choose radio. Now, for the grading rules, this one is a little bit complicated. It depends on how you want to grade your student. The default setting is this. In order to get the full mark, one mark, you have to answer the question correctly. And let's see how it looks like. Just by clicking OK, you have your first question ready. Now, the good thing for this is that you can go to a preview and see what the student sees. So let's say question one, which of the following is a color? you can activate the grading system to see if the student has achieved that one mark. One P means one mark. So if the student chooses snake, obviously the answer is wrong. If the student chooses a brown, he got that one mark. As you can see here, I am using the radio type. Say for example, I'm using a checkbox. Let's see how it looks like. I can edit my question here. Now I'll add more choices. I can add a red color and a green color. Now this time I can no longer use radio because red and green is also one of the choices. As you can see, automatically it converts into checkbox option for me. Now if you have you know, various ways of trying to grade the students. Say for example, if the students achieve all of this correctly, you want to give in three marks, you can do that. All right, you can say you get three marks for getting all the answers correct. Or you want to be more lenient, say for example, at least one correct and maximum you only allow one mistake, you can add this rule. So, okay, just a minute, let me change this to one mark. You can add this rule. So according to your rule set, 
when at least one is correct and only allow a maximum one wrong, the student can still score and one mark. Let's see how it looks like. Go to preview, turn on the grading system. Let's say the student got everything correct. As you can see, he got all the four marks. But if he can just score one correct, at least he could get a one mark and maximum one wrong. If he got two wrong, immediately he got zero mark. So this one, you can play around with it. Next type of question is multiple choice. Let's try with, um, sorry, simple answer. Let's have a look at a simple answer type of question. For example, I would say name the capital city of Sarawak. The accepted answers, you have to type it out so that it can be marked automatically. Now, here comes the problem because there may be different ways of students typing the answer. For example, Kuching is an answer and you need to add it as an answer. Some students may write it as Kuching City. You can add it as an answer. Or some students will go all the way to say it is Kuching City and put a full stop there. So you have to add all the possibilities. That could be an answer. So this is the kind of simple problems that you have when it comes to automated marking. Although it is not case sensitive, but it is character sensitive. That means if the student typed it is Kuching City without a full stop, it will be marked as incorrect. I will show you how it looks like. The grading, I'll just give one mark for this. Okay, and preview and see how it looks like. Turn on the grading. Let's see if the student types spacebar, spacebar, Kuching, you still get that one mark. All right. But if the students type Kuching and full stop, it is deemed as incorrect. Here, this is the kind of a problem. But is it going to stop teachers from using this feature? No. At least if it's automatically marked correct, you can just skim through and you don't have to look through. Maybe those students who score it incorrectly, maybe you need to take a little bit time to recheck the student's answer. It could be because it wasn't detected by the automated marking system. This is why if a student got this question wrong, you may need some time to look back. And that one will be featured in another video to show you how to see students answer in exam.net. Okay. So let's see. Let's add in another question. Let's say if you would like to add in a sub question, you can add it under here. Add a sub question under question two. Let's try with fill the gaps. All right. To in in order to generate a question with filling the gaps, you can try with um, Windows is a computer operating system published by a company known as Microsoft. Let's try this. Okay, Microsoft. This company Okay, so in filling the gaps Here you can see add gap That means you can go over here and if you want to change this into a gap whereby a student can fill in the answer you can highlight it And add it as a gap So this gap one of the correct answer is Microsoft. Now, if you feel that the student may answer another way, say for example, you might be thinking, hmm, I think my, my students will answer Microsoft cooperation. You can click here, edit it, and add additional correct answers. For example, Microsoft cooperation could be a possible choice. So you just update it. Next, Let's say I want to have multiple gaps. I want Bill Gets to be the gap as well. I can highlight it. It says create gap for Bill Gets. I just add a gap. And again, say for example, some students know Bill Gets is the one that is the one founded Microsoft. But there is another person that students may know and they would like to write that person's name. You can edit it and 
add additional correct answer and that person is Paul Allen. He was also one of the co-founder in uh, Microsoft Corporation. So this one, you can choose to have one point per gap. By turning on one point per gap means for this question, if a student scored correctly for one of the gaps, he will get one mark. And if he scored another gap correctly, he will earn a total of two marks. So you can turn this on. Or you can turn this off and say that the student must get both the gaps correctly in order to get that one mark. To change this mark, you can always come over here to change it. And if you want to make things more complicated, you can always change the rules. So usually I would say one point per gap. Okay. Now, you can see now for question two, I have part A and part B. Next, let's go over to match answer. Let's add in a new question match the answers and let's try to see what we can do with match the answer first i will type out the the question that i want the students to do say please match the following and then under my answer options here will be the options and the matching options say for for example for primary school we can say rabbit and one of the one of the things that can be matched is animal. I can add answer. So it says here the answer option: a rabbit will be matched to an animal. Let's fill in a little bit more stuff here. A car is matched to a transport. Add an eraser is matched to a stationary. Now, this seems quite easy, isn't it? Because obviously a rabbit goes to an animal, car goes to a transport, eraser goes to a stationary. What if you want to have more matches that may not be fulfilled, may just be there to confuse the students? Here we have an option. You can leave the options field empty to add additional incorrect answers. So for here, I will try to put a matching option of food and add it so that there will be another um, outlier food which there is nothing to match with. And let's see how it looks like. Again, these rules, you can change it by yourself. To preview it, you can always scroll up and click preview to see how the question paper looks like. So. For my match the answer, I can click rabbit, go over to animal, and okay, I did not turn on the grading. So I can turn on the grading and see where I am now. I need to score everything correctly. My car goes over to transport, and my eraser goes over to stationary, and I got full mark. So if a student accidentally matched eraser to food, then the student couldn't get any marks. So this is very useful for primary school. Go back to edit. Let's see what other options we have here. Okay. Now for the next two one, free text and answer with attachment, these tools, these two have no automated marking system. Therefore, it is good for the teachers to explore themselves how it can be used. For me, I will show you free text and how it looks like. Under free text, one of the questions that I can use is please, please write a 50 word summary of one of the following items you find from the picture shown below. So in this free text, I give an instruction for the students to write a summary of the following items that the student can find from the picture shown below. That means I can actually attach a picture. Now up here, there are various ways to change your text or other features. And to insert a picture, you can click insert image. You can drop an image here or you can click to insert from your file explorer. 
So to do that, I will click this and I have a picture ready and then I can insert it. And there we go. I can put it center really nicely so that the students can see nicely or I can put this align at center like that or I can enlarge it even more. Since it is not an automated marking system, the answer here will be an optional one. Maybe you want to test the students based on their English comprehension or Bahasa Melayu comprehension or writing skills. So this one is fairly optional. And if you want to change the grade, you can add grading instruction to change this to say 10 marks maybe. Save it. So it will be replaced with 10 marks. But remember, this has nothing to do with automated marking system. Press OK. Let's preview the question paper and see how it looks like. So there you go. Question 4 is to write a 50 word summary of one of the following. So this one is a digital way for the students to write because you did not allow insert attachment from um, taking photo from their phone. So this one, the students would have to type out the answer themselves. For example, a sofa is yellow color. It was bought back in 2010. Now, you can set the word limit for this one, which is, let's go to edit. Let's go to edit the question paper. The word limit. Oh, it is not in here. It could be somewhere there about the word limit we'll find out soon so don't worry about it so let's click ok and you can continue here to add more question the last one answer with attachment is when you require your student to write on a hard copy and then take a photo and upload their work this one it will be done in a separate video Now once done, you can randomize the order of the questions, meaning to say question 1 could be question 3, question 5 could be question 2. So this is all up to you. You can also hide the points from the students during the exam. Next, again, this one has been shown to you already in the previous video. Check it out if you haven't. This one, we need the student's information. Up to you if you want to anonymize the exam, spelling check. And then if you require your student to scan a handwritten work, Please enable this so that they can scan their work and I'll show you how it looks like in another video. Once done, we can create the exam paper. Oh, I have not typed the name. So this one, I will just call it the auto mark exams. Then create exam. So there you go. 